what, what it prompted, it prompted us uh, maybe maybe a few years later, you know, many years later, many years later. See, that, that experience was the beginning of something we found mm -hmm. out because maybe about 30 years later, we were working with a guy who was, uh, he, he, worked doing with, a he was doing a documentary on Hendrix. Mm -hmm. And he was using my brother and I to authenticate, make sure that certain videos and certain things was authentic. Real. Mm -hmm. And um, after a while, it was becoming boring to us. We was in one room. And he came with a little, with a film um, of us and Jimmy. A very rare, rare, extremely rare film. Mm. And we were in one room, and he was in the other, and he played it. And when he played it, it's, all of a sudden, it was almost as though we were being, there was a tone that came through, and both of us looked up. And from that day forward, mm. we started writing a musical mythology on music mm -hmm. and the experience, what really happened in those room encounters that we had. What, you know, what happened? We wrote it in the form of mythology. Mm -hmm. uh, he and I, we write music. Mm -hmm. However, this was, this was the first time that we ever even attempted to do something of this magnitude. Mm -hmm. And it flowed through us as though it was so simple. And we, within about a couple of weeks, or more, maybe a month, took us a month, to write and get to get it all up, all that whole experience out of us in a myth, in a musical mythology. Right. So we took some of the musics that we were working with with, with Hendrix Henry. prior to that, mm -hmm. added it to the mythology, added it to the story, mm -hmm. and voila, that's what that uh, Mojo Man is like the introduction to that particular uh, experience. Right. So why animation? Interesting animation because there was no other way of us being able to. <coughs> we we would have loved to have Hendrix in this way, <laughs> but that was the closest way of us being able to bring him back into the and let the people see the visual <coughs> aspects of an animation. And not only him, but also to be able to see the worlds of music. Mm -hmm. it is you know what we've learned and what Jimmy expressed to us on numerous occasions. The music had, you know, the key of C, the key of A, the key of D, each have a world of their own, mm -hmm. you know, and through the mythology, what we did was we started going into those keys, into the key of D, into the key of A, and we started working on the worlds of music, mm -hmm. and we brought it to life. And, we were able to, and, and through animation, we were able to also deal with the beings, the muakils, the mm -hmm. beings that live within those music, and we were, and we were able to actually express it shows you because <clears throat> like Jimmy used to say music is a force that and you know back in the uh, back in, the, in antiquity there was a force that was held sacred used you know, for healing was used for healing building and many other feats you know extraordinary feats mm -hmm. and now we just deal with it from a commercial aspect mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't realize that the Hendrix unlocked a tone brought a tone to the to the planet that had never been here before, exposed. never been exposed until and his come. a frequency, and so though that frequency had a mission, had its own mission, mm -hmm. and so I guess we are kind of like troubadours I, to a certain degree. We're here to just continue. We're part of the continuum of that, and we do that through our message that we have in Mojo Man. Cool. Fine, Mojo. Uh, you're good. <laughs> uh, what, uh, Mojo, because we're dealing with we're dealing with a, a supernatural, a, a force, an energy, or a force that comes from blackness. You know, and when we speak of blackness, we speak of the blackness of new. The blackness of space, of, space. The of the universe, uh, of, uni of the universe. It has been made into a negative kind of connotation. However, ours, when we when we speak of Mojo, we are speaking of we're speaking of the universal the, darkness, the power in which we come from, the power in which all things come from, which mm -hmm. is the womb, the darkness of the womb, and so it's considered the Mojo, the creating or the creative force. Mm -hmm. it, it's also known as the Mojo.
talking about um, how you use animation and a way to uh, incorporate Jimmy's presence and with in that same vein, with that same mentality, speak to uh, this hologram of Tupac that uh, you've uh, created, and uh, Dr. Dre uh, has used uh, the the essence of that hologram in his live performance, and has mentioned uh, wishing that other artists were uh, also put into a hologram form like Jimi Hendrix. So, so speak to that. Well, you know, the first time I think I've really seen that done. I think there was a, a movie where they used John Coltrane. Are you familiar with that? Um, it was a, a, a movie I seen with Coltrane. What movie was that time? I, I remember. Very, I remember clearly where they where someone took uh, Coltrane's image and made it. In the, in the, uh, <coughs> and I was so impressed. I was so impressed. I knew that that would be the future. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the fact that it comes as no surprise that someone. Dr. Dre. The Dr. Dre used him because <coughs> I think I would have did this in death, but we wanted to do with Jimmy. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, you know, it's in the atmosphere. You know, it's no surprise that the, the, the minds right now are in tune to that frequency. I think that 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 reality, that reality uh, came into existence in my mind uh, when I was listening to because when you have when you're listening to tape uh old tape two track two inch tapes of hendrix playing his guitar it's a very interesting phenomenon because you could hear the energy prior to him touching the guitar it's an energy that um Come sure, from that comes from the from the electrical person, electrical energy. impulse energy. that comes right before you touch the string mm -hmm. and you could hear this particular energy and our whole concept was you could feel it you could feel it you could feel it you could hear it right before he touches it and so therefore if anybody wanted to authenticate if anybody wanted to authenticate a person and say oh is that it's like a fingerprint mm -hmm. you know it's, it's actually their fingerprint the impulse and then it touching the so it can easily be ident is it identifiable no one can uh, in, um, emulate, emulate mm -hmm. that particular person if you're able to get. Now the query is, are we able to actually take that impulse? Are we able to, will we, able, will we be able to um, uh, one day extract that impulse and use that energy for whatever reasons we could, we could uh, use those, uh, that energy for? From. So when you when we talk about holograms and we talk about things like that, there'll be ultimately times when we'll be able to through music and through sound that we'll be able to time travel. We'll be able to go into it, and that's why even when we listen to music, we're able to identify it immediately. It's like we hear music and we hear the creation. You go back to your mother. You can go back cooking to, in the kitchen. kitchen. You, you know, smell with certain songs, right? Yeah. Because music in itself. Has the ability to create, to 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 extend and go beyond time and go beyond time that we, the chronological time that we relate to. Music so, can go into seep into your dreams. It'll mm -hmm. sleep into your dreams, and you going into whereas whereas nothing else can go into your dreams. Everything else will wake you up, but music, a song, will go into your dreams. It'll become, it become part a part of your dream, and then you all of a sudden you wake up and you. And you, you know, you wake up easily. It's not an interference. Mm -hmm. And so, these are some of the things that 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 uh, we want people to really understand. And I think that ultimately, we through through uh, our uh, mythology, we'll be able to expose and make people a little bit more aware of some of the other um, aspects of music, mm -hmm. other than the commercial, other than the commercial boogie yeah. and boogie and dancing. Right. Well, you know, you Not know, that that's bad too, but there was know. all kinds of feats that, mm -hmm. that we were able to do with music. You mm -hmm. know, like um, <clears throat> there was there was some place where I read where we were able to put a body to a soul. Right. You know, make it in a kind of being, not quite a human being. So there was a lot of things that we were experimenting with with music. You know, healing mm -hmm. music it has healing powers. It has teaching powers. Mm -hmm. It has all types of powers that we have just totally neglected abandoned. or abandoned. abandoned. And I think it's and just, yeah. And now what we do is we just put 
Sometimes we even just put negative energies on top of this positive energy. Right. You know, and, and music, enslave it. We and use, we use we use music as a slave mm -hmm. for, for, for to, our, to make to make money. Right. Or yeah. aggrandizement. We, we so that's the sellout. Mm -hmm. So uh, for our aggrand aggrandizement, you know, like I am, I am, I am, and then we ride them in this funky beat, mm -hmm. you know. And so it's all about. And so it's all about I. Well, what about this beat that is doing it? You know. So uh, what about this energy? Mm -hmm. yeah, this, yeah, force, yeah. this force. This force. It's you're just working, working with. It's really working, working for you. Mm -hmm. You know, right. and really was a uh, really it's 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 a whole objective was for you mm -hmm. because it came from you. It came out of out of your experiences, your experiences in the diaspora. It came out of your cries. It came out of your moans, moans and groans of your ancestors. Mm -hmm. And so now, it, and so it, it became a force, it became a power that you can use or it, or, it, or it lends itself to you. And then for your liberation to a certain degree, mm -hmm. for your for your power, and for your development, mm -hmm. and you just use it to, uh, yeah. To, to, to sometimes just make people... To, to, to enslave your own people. To enslave your own people and to enslave those that uh, anyone that cares. Because anytime you would sit around and call a woman a bitch and you're going to do all kinds of negative things on top of the music. Of a power, of a force so great and mm -hmm. so so willing and so... To serve you. Mm -hmm. So willing to serve you, mm -hmm. to raise you out of whatever your... Uh, Diabolical condition was prior, you know. Then, then what what you're doing is selling out. Mm -hmm. Speak more to the genre of funk music, if you will. In that, uh, when you think about uh, Mozart, Bach, Duke Ellington, Count Basie, who you mentioned, in terms of live musicians, in terms of musicians executing uh, in a uh, in a group or either in a solo capacity as far as genres of music go. But I, as far as we're concerned at the museum, uh, funk is pretty much the last genre of an expression of live musicianship before they started to incorporate that into sampling. And then you yourselves are musicians, and but you've gone from using <coughs> guitars and drums to using midis and computers. Mm -hmm. You know, So in that scope, uh, funk, we feel, is pretty much the last creative expression of musicianship as far as artistry is concerned. So speak to that and then just talk about your feelings on funk and... You know, I have a, a mixed emotions about that. Mm. Because, you know, um, I've come up with uh, musicians like I've watched Miles Davis and I've watched him say that he sold out, that he wasn't a purist anymore because he decided to, he decided to go in another direction with jazz, mm -hmm. you know, he's, he decided that he would use some young musicians and he would Herbie start, Hancock, Herbie Hancock, Hancock, Hancock. and he would, you know, do different things. Well, and I even watched Herbie Hancock, them do the exact same <coughs> thing with Herbie Hancock when they say he sold out because he went to hip hop mm -hmm. and he started using hip hop elements. Oh, yes. To be able to, you know, uh, well, my brother and I went. To, I just have to. I just yeah. want. I just want to preface that because we went to. My brother and I had a teacher by the name of John Lewis, who was with a. Um, who was with the Marley Jazz Quartet. MJ right? He was with the MJQ. Bad, bad dude, right? And uh, uh, every time we would go into the class, because my brother and I were with Hendrix, you know, and so and a lot of the students knew that we were affiliated with Hendrix, and so. When we would go into the class, it would be like, uh, oh, we weren't purists because we were. What are y'all doing in this what jazz class? What are y'all doing in this jazz class? Because, because, and of course, we loved that because we come out of the jazz era also. And mm -hmm. so that was part of our bring, uh, upbringing as well. But the jazz guys would, would, the purists would be like, you know, with the pipes in their mouth and they would be like, <clears throat> and uh, we would be like, you know, kind of a. Uh, um, we were humble. We were yeah. humble and whatnot, but yet and still, yet and still, we understood that music, again, is a force, and it lends itself to those that are aware of its force. See, so music, it's, music is there was a, there's an old saying that music is our soul. Mm -hmm. Music is the soul, mm -hmm. you know. And what and happens? 
music. All this music. Without any instrument. Any instrument. Without the piano. Mm -hmm. We can make music. Right. Without a guitar. We can make music. We can make music. We can make music with our body. Without you know, with our hands. With our body, hand. We can make hands. music with our mouth. You know, so we have to be very careful of even pigeonholing. You know, uh, I, you know I, I, I'm glad I didn't, like a lot of my peers, I'm glad that I didn't frown up on hip hop. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because I could have. We were making money on dance music during that hip hop came in. We were making money on funk. And I love funk. But when hip hop came, I was sort of ready for that because Jimmy prepared us for hip hop. And he prepared us for all kinds of music that may come on the scene. From and, us. We, and we have to learn how to welcome that. And we have to learn how to use it. And, and know why it's here. It's, and know another what? Brand, it's called crayon. Colors, yeah, crayon, it's colors. crayon colors. There's another color that we have to use to really embellish our sound, our, our sound experience, and, our experience, mm -hmm. our music coming from us. You know, and maybe one day it will just be a computer. You know, to do it, but we're going to do it. And, 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 and not of, only, and not only that. I think that also once we realize, see, I think that. One of, one of our foibles, one of our problems here is names. You understand? Because, and this is how we lose ourselves mm. through, through not understanding what the name is. If, 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 if no matter what Chinese music, <clears throat> no matter what you do with Chinese music, it'll always be Chinese music. No matter what you do with Latin music, it'll always be Latin. They can, add, they they can add hip hop to it and it'll still be. Latin music, but because we have lost the identity of our music, we can go all the way back to ragtime. If I say ragtime to my grandchild, mm -hmm. they look at me like, oh, that don't belong. that's a white music. You understand? Yet yeah, still it was ours. You understand? If I, if, I say, if I say, well, what about country music? Do you like country music? Oh, you know, all that banjo playing stuff. Banjo, we brought the banjo. We brought the banjo in, but because we because it was called country music, mm. we lost it. We lost because it was called because it's called funk because it's called funk. Because it was called funk. Now anybody can do now it. anybody can do but it. But yeah, it's still you, and it's okay for people to do it. But you're supposed to always know you. That's why I applaud you for what you're doing with the institution. We're supposed to institutionalize our things, and we're supposed to know the history. Our children. The history is there, how rich, how rich of a culture, musical culture that they have. Mm -hmm. That they are the ones who broke the banjo. That we are the ones who created funk. That we are the ones. It's not created just hip -hop. Most kids right now, if it's not hip hop, they don't feel as though they can identify, identify it. it. Or it's well, not ours. So it is, so it is with our ancient cultures. Mm -hmm. We have ancient cultures, spiritual cultures, that, that where we was at our highest and our best and our wisest. And we just talk about the hip hop culture. Yo, what about your comedic culture? You know, most wise people take culture. They whether build, they whether they, they, build, whether they like it or not, mm -hmm. they, they certainly don't throw it away. They don't throw it away. They build on the culture. You build on cultures. You don't say, okay, let's forget about all of that six thousand years of history, and let's start from hip hop. Yeah, and hey. we start a culture from hip hop, or we start a culture from no, funk, or we start a culture from from if from, we if from, we hey, hey, from um from cool from what was it called? cool 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 in the game no cool cool music um where was oh cool uh, uh um uh bebop 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 there was a bebop era mm -hmm. right of music. and a bebop culture mm -hmm. but and we a bebop culture. here we we can acknowledge that we are people that were here since the beginning of the planet. I mean, we, we, can, we can say, okay, we can trace back millions of years, mm -hmm. right? Of being, that, here. of being here. So if we were on this planet for, for, for millions of years, then that means we may have had thousands of cultures. And if we had at least a thousand cultures for people who've been on, on the planet for millions of years, mm -hmm. well then, how 
many of them do we know? And how great were and, and, and why don't we just start? And why don't we always start with the last? Right. Even the Greco Roman, even Greco Roman. When we look at this civilization today, we could see traces of Rome. We could see traces of Greece. Mm -hmm. We could see traces of all types of culture. Mm -hmm. Which know, was really, great. which was traces of yours. Mm -hmm. And traces of our culture. So everybody's building on your culture. Mm -hmm. Except you. Except you. And you want to end all your culture and start, start, and start. from the beginning. From the one that it's start from the beginning again. We keep starting. We the ancients call that the muruk. We right. constantly keep running around in, in circles, mm -hmm. you know, instead of building on our greatness. on our greatness mm -hmm. and then continuing from here. You use the term mojo. We most a lot of people will panic instead of instead of all, all voodoo, you know, and they, instead of saying, well, oh, everybody will say, oh, well, that's voodoo. It's bad. That's bad. That's bad. Well, then take take some of the bad out of it and make Maybe it into something it. good. Mm -hmm. You know, that's I mean, what you, you do know. with music. Uh, when I sit here and if we sit here and we create music every day, and I may look and say, I talk, I don't like that. I don't like that in there. And he'll say, Okay, you don't like that. Well, let's try this. Let's take that out and put this in. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't just abandon it. Just throw it away, or the or the or like or, like, or the food, or the, yeah, you know, or the or the water's dirty. Throw it away. No, well, the water's dirty. Let's see how the, the wise man, the scientist says, well, let's see how to clean up the water. Mm -hmm. You know, not throw the water away. You know, so that's basically what we're going through right now as a people. Mm -hmm. You know, we have got to, and, and thank God for our, um, institutions like what you're trying to do or what <coughs> you're literally what doing, you're doing. You know, because it holds in, stops. We're so busy running, you know. We're like we 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 could we have a song called "Now People." We're the, we're the now people. Everything is now, now, now. We don't understand that you know there was then too. There's then and now, and there's now and then. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so let's let's start dealing with then too. You know what I'm saying? And let's hold then okay. and study. Who are some of the talents that you appreciate today musically? I I I I appreciate talent because word word talent is the power there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not the people. The word talent is what I appreciate. Mm -hmm. And so whatever wherever talent comes from, I appreciate because appreciation is something that you you do. You can't you you can't you you have to Appreciate. We appreciate. Wine appreciates. You understand? So I appreciate through talent. Mm -hmm. So wherever it comes from. And anyone that disciplines themselves, mm -hmm. anyone that's going to take the time to discipline themselves for a specific thing is going to get something out of that. And you know, I'm some of the raw talent, <coughs> some of the raw talent, really. You know, sometimes we get so I we they, they used to say oh, to my brother and I, you know too much. You know, I like you better when you just was simple. <laughs> but you know, the, you know that rawness. And there are a lot of people, right? And when you hear raw talent, you hear so much and you say, Wow, that's uh that's really and then sometimes then they start taking that raw talent and say, Well, I have to conform. I'm going to have to conform to what's going on out here. So they take that raw talent and they conform it and they package it and it becomes a whole nother package and then you got the same whole thing. Tune and I, while we were up in Mexico, down, down in Mexico, we spent some time with the Hichola Indians and we were doing some, you know, we were, I mean, we were out in the, out, out way out in the, in the up in the mountains and we spent three days with them, and we were doing the, they were doing the ghost dance. You know, we, we did a cleansing, and then we did the ghost dance. And Incredible. You talk about raw, you talk about raw talent, raw talent, and the experience. The experience, raw the talent. raw talent. Oh, you know what raw talent, talent did? Raw talent brought the, brought made the stars. Made the stars. 
dance. Mm. Raw talent made all of the animals in that forest. So Sit down and, and get down in there and participate. In we we got we went through one morning with raw talent. Mm -hmm. You know the constantly just the, the repetition of that that brought out the mama sets, mama set, mama sets uh monkeys. Mama said monkeys up there. They they like grooving, grooving right along with us. Everything wolves, wolves is, is singing the howl. and howling and becoming a part of it. I, and the, I kid the, you not, the fire. The fire. The fire it's, called, it's called ghost dance, mm -hmm. right? It's called the ghost dance. And the fire starts and the fire starts start getting into the into the, the movement. Into the movement mm -hmm. and everybody is everybody's into the movement. And lo and behold, you look up in the sky, and the planets, uh, uh, the planets and the stars are dancing. Mm. Now, now, that's raw. That's there was nothing more than that, mm. as far as I'm concerned. Mm. Now, if we try to take that and commercialize it, mm. you know, I, I'm sure many of <laughs> many, yeah, many people will say commercialize it. Put that on record. <laughs> you know, you know, yeah. I would love a lot of, now I'll tell you what I did see, this is my commercial mind, <laughs> I did see, I did see, and would love for MCs, because the word MC, mm -hmm. and MC means master of ceremony, master is an attribute of God, master the ceremony, the ceremony of life, so when an MC can see this, you understand? See things this like mastery. this. This mastery of the universe, mm -hmm. mastery of, of the moment, mastery of time. <laughs> when they can really see what's going on, because we can't see what's happening. We can't see what music really does. Jimmy, how it affects the universe, how it affects the stars, how it affects the animals, how it affects. They would be more inclined to say, forget all this commercial stuff. Look at what's really happening. And then they will be blessed by the universe. And blessed by music. And blessed by music as well. Nice. Nice. You know, I'm fascinated by, you know, folks. I mean, I, I think just by the nature of who we are, we're obviously fascinated by people who have been a part of history and touched a part of history. And the whole experience that you had with Jimi Hendrix, I'd like to hear more about them. When you talk about raw talent, is that maybe a close human embodiment of kind of what that was? And you know, how Yes. How was that time for you? Mm. Right. No, I just wanna <coughs> Yeah, Jimmy was definitely raw because he was so raw that we didn't even recognize him yeah. as a talent. Yes. Yeah. That's how raw Jimmy was. We didn't recognize it because we didn't think that his music would make it. You know, he had already made it in England. He came back to get Tog and I, and he played his album for us. And we listened to the album, and it was like, oh, you poor you'll Jimmy. never make it, poor Jimmy. Poor Jimmy, how, we got to find something commercial because we was we, we was were so into commercialized. James Brown, at the same James Brown, James, James, James Jackie Brown. Wilson, and, and, you know, and if it didn't sound like, like Jackie, any of that. Yeah. You know, the, the, the four times, I don't know, four times wasn't even I don't know, I don't remember, but, 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 but we were into commercial, we were commercial minded. We were not raw. We were, we didn't know what we were. We were too raw. polished. We were too <laughs> polished. We were too polished. And we were looking for polish. And, so, and if it didn't have no shoe polish on it, then we did not. Appreciate. We couldn't appreciate. We couldn't appreciate. Mm -hmm. And so we stymied He was appreciated. He, he had appreciated. He had appreciated. We just couldn't appreciate it. He had appreciated in many things, in his in his style, and in thinking, in his thinking, in his spirit. There were times Jimmy could talk to us. <coughs> we didn't understand. We, we didn't understand. It was like he was talking another language. You know, it was like he was talking in another language because he was this twenty-seven year old, twenty-six year old, well, twenty-four, twenty-four year old kid that wasn't was, talking Harlem language. He wasn't. He wasn't talking. Hollow. You know, he was well, there's, a language, there's a language that we used to hear, and we call it shit talk. And, and if, you're not shit talking, shit talk. if you're not shit talking, if you ain't shit talking, I'm then there's something, 
the next song. Something's wrong, even, something even, wrong with you. Even now. <laughs> if you ain't shit talking, either you a geek. Or there's something wrong with you. Right. I can't get with that. And that is the mindset. Mm. That's our mindset. That's our children. And mindset. Hendrix introduced us to a whole nother philosophy of thinking. Right. You know, he 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 introduced it. Was, it what we're speaking now is only as, as a result, as of, a result of, of, his of his influence at 26. Because now I have kids look at me like, what is he, what is he saying? You know? <laughs> what is that? And then I get scared. <laughs> 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 is that me? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, he was he was definitely a major raw talent. He was definitely he, you know. If you would just, you know, uh, uh, are you experienced? I mean, come on, you cannot get raw. Then are you experienced? Or machine gun. Or machine guns, but uh, but see see how in the world I'm I'm, I'm frightened already. I'm scared. How in the world did I listen to all your experience and wonder what's he going to make? It? Was this going to make it? How dare us? How dare? Who am I? You know where do I come off? You know because I'm the number. You know, <laughs> and that's what and that's and that's where we that's when we lose our identity we lose we even lose we lose our idea we you know what I, I was speaking of Jimmy I'm, here I am I'll never forget meeting Satchmo mm. I met Satchmo in Harlem mm -hmm. and I was I I was I was so brainwashed that I didn't even realize who and how great this uh, uh, individual uh, was. Didn't you play? I didn't see you. <laughs> now I was just bomb. I was like, bomb. I was racist. I thought he was something that he some was. Tool some tool for, for, the some white man. for the white man. I didn't realize how great he really was. I didn't realize, and it wasn't even about the white man. It wasn't even about, it was about this great individual, this great, this great artist, this great talent. And now I listen to this and I say, and he had, and he was so humble and he was so beautiful, but I, and he never knew what I was harboring. He never knew I was harboring this feeling for him. Mm -hmm. But I know it. I know what I was harboring. I know what, how, and how that holds me back and how that holds us back. When we harbor things and we don't have a knowledge of things. And that's why, again, I'm so happy that you're here because, see, people need to hear this. People need to, because a lot of people hold things in. You know, they hold things because they don't have a knowledge of it. And the more knowledge that we have of a thing, the more it frees us from thinking like that. Mm -hmm. And more it allows us to say, or fear from resentment. All right, fear from resentment. Because I have resentment. Resentment that I shouldn't have had. And the only reason I had it because I didn't have the knowledge. And we need institutions like this in order to be able to serve our children, to serve them and give them the knowledge, the wisdom, and understanding that they need so to avoid the near occasion of that sin that I had. Okay. The sin of ignorance. The sin of ignorance. Anything you don't want, want to add? Uh, but I want to subtract something. <laughs> 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 um, oh, let me see. Let me see. Anything that I want to add? Yeah, add. that book. Your book. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we, uh, did, a we, did, a, we did an autobiography. And our autobiography encompasses a lot of things. It's called Ghetto Fighters, right? Mm -hmm. In Harlem World. Is the name of it? Ghetto Fighters in Harlem World, and it will be out. We are we're looking to publish it ourselves, and it'll be online, and we'll uh, let you know. Right now, my brother and I are working on uh, actually talking, having it as a talking book, so that we could just you know just talk it. <laughs> okay. Where does
does Mojo Man go from here? I'm, I'm interested in understanding kind of it how moves. you got to putting the animation together. And then where does Mojo Man and Ghetto Fighters, I mean, the whole concept... It goes move? into what is called the next, the next movement of Mojo Man goes into the world of the movie. It goes into the world, world of, of the Milwaukee. Of the Milwaukee. Goes into it leads us into the world, and which is going to be a movie, right? It leads us into a movie, right? right? And also, which is the what we the, call the, 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 the uh, it's going to be the uh, <coughs> the movie. Um, it'll be the intro to a degree of a movie called the movie, right? Right. And the mo the mo again is the story of the Milwaukee. The story of Mu, like Mu, M-U, music, M-U, S-I-C. You know, it's the beginning of, it's showing, it's going to lead us into that world. The world of music. Oh, I should say the world's called W-H-I-R-L. The world's, the music throws at you. Right. And we have a screenplay for it. And also there will be shorts, short, uh, what we call, we call them the, uh, digital music storytelling, DMSs, mm -hmm. clear out DMSs, short DMSs, just like Mojo Man, that will introduce the movie, that will ultimately introduce the movie as we're moving along. So we're working on the second one. Good deal. Well, thanks so much for your time today and, and being so generous with sharing all that rich history. Well, thank you for being here. Yeah. Reality. Bye.